I'm your host, Chad Jensen, and with me as always, my partner in crime, my fellow football priest. You know him, you love him. He is Zach Kelberman. Zach, today, another kick to the groin area for the Denver Broncos. Darrell Casey is done for the season. Now, the backdrop to this story really quick, and then I want to serve this over to you for a gut reaction, is he actually tweaked it or perhaps even injured it. The, the, the main injury might have occurred week two, but either way, he he tweaked it. It was bothering him all week from the Pittsburgh game. He still played because he's a tough football player. He's a veteran. He's a five-time pro bowler. Got out there, and there was a, a, a point where he exacerbated the injury. And, you know, so this morning they gave him an MRI. Turns out it's a torn bicep. He's done for the season. So that's five more Pro Bowls that go on injured reserve for the Denver Broncos. And then adding a little insult to that injury is the fact that the off-ball linebacker, the Broncos, traded – because, of course, right now you could really use some defensive line help. You got Demarcus Walker, Draymond Jones, and now Jarrell Casey all on injured reserve. You could really use some DL help. But guess what? They traded Christian Covington to Cincinnati to acquire, uh, what's his name, Austin Calitro. I almost forgot his name. And he has been placed on injured reserve after hurting his, tearing his hamstring, whatever it was, in yesterday's game. It just, when it rains, it pours, as you like to say. If one meme can summarize the Broncos season, it's the mole man football to the groin from the Simpsons. It's just every single time, every single injury, it's just another kick to the to the Netherlands, Chad. And, uh, you know, that with Gerald Casey, though, it, it sucks because he's a name player and he's a starter. But from a production standpoint, the Broncos really aren't losing much here. It's not that much of a loss. He has three pass breakups and a handful of solo tackles. He kind of was one of the bigger disappointments of the Broncos season. Wasn't really impacting the games as much. And Shelby Harris has vastly outplayed Jarrell Casey at a fraction of the cost. Chad, I would not be surprised if Casey played his final down in a Denver uniform. They can save almost $12 million next offseason by releasing him. No dead money. So uh, yeah. no big loss there. The thing with Calitro, they picked up th two inside linebacker prospects, Barron and Calitro, to make up for losing Todd Davis. Both the guys they picked up are injured now, as opposed to maybe, you know, signing a natural inside linebacker like a Nigel Bradham who plays every year. This is the Broncos MO with Elway. You sign injured players and the players end up injured. It's rinse repeat every single time. I would, you know, here's the thing. We, I criticized Casey, of course, not knowing there was an injury yesterday. He made it into my losers section in the winners and losers following the Bucks game. And you and I even talked about it both on air and off air that, man, Casey sure hasn't made much of a dent since he arrived. I mean, they're stopping the run. That's the one thing the Broncos that can kind of hang their hat on these three games. And he's helping out and contributing in that way. That's not but, why they got him, though. You know? But the only game he's made an impact, Zach, was that first game against Tennessee. And it turns out that was the only game in which he was fully healthy. So I'm, I, I think it is a big loss, especially considering the fact that if you still had Draymond Jones, if you had either Draymond Jones or Demarcus Walker still active and ready to play, I'd maybe feel a little bit better about it. But the fact that you're not getting either of those guys back for another three weeks regardless, that means that Deshaun Williams is suddenly a starter opposite of Shelby Harris. That means, or McTelvin Ajim, take your picks, probably going to end up being Ajim. Well, I don't know, actually. Could could be Williams. And then they're going to have to go out and, and sign someone because – I'm trying to think. I'm racking my brain on the practice squad. I don't think there is another defensive lineman at this stage. So they're going to have to do something just to add bodies there, Zach, because, you know, it's NFL. Guys go down. People get hurt. Guys need, especially the big defensive linemen, they need breathers. That's officially a crisis. It's been, you know, it's been a, an epidemic of injuries. The Broncos have obviously not uh, coped with the injuries very well. They're 0-3, and yesterday's game was just a complete travesty. However, this is officially a crisis on the defensive line because now you're down. You got two of your three starters and your main backups injured reserve. Yeah, you know, uh, this is why, you know, I, I like the depth the Broncos had along the defensive line, and I liked Covington a lot. I'm surprised they traded him for a backup special teams linebacker who's now injured. I thought that was a good pickup, uh, the addition of Covington. Maybe Kaiser, who's on the practice squad, maybe he gets elevated. I personally, if the Broncos have to venture right. outside, you can't you can't start Deshaun Williams or Kaiser against a, a, an opponent in the NFL. Go out and get me Snacks Harrison. He's a free agent. He's a run plugger. He has some sacks to his resume. He wants to play again this season. He wouldn't come too expensive. It's 
I know it's a developmental year for the Broncos now. You're looking at who you can play next season, who you want to keep, but you still have to have starters for these games. You can't trot out Deshaun Williams and have no one behind him. So go get me Snacks Harrison just to plug the hole. You never really know. That was my first impulse as well. By the way, you're right on that. De- uh, Deion Sizer is on the practice squad. My bad. And he was just re-signed last week, in fact. Um, that was my initial impulse as well. Go out and get a guy like a proven guy like Snacks Harrison. The problem is, okay, the Denver Broncos have been reaching quite often of late, especially as, a, as it relates to free agency. They sign a guy to replace this guy in free agency. Derek Wolf leaves. They, they bring in Jarrell Casey. And when that when you reach like that, when you try and solve problems, um, oh, what's the best way? It's, it's not a grassroots um, depth situation for the Denver Broncos. They don't have, especially because of the injury bug, they don't have those third and fourth and fifth round guys over the last two or three years that can step into the gap. So – the football fates and the nature of football karma, Zach, is that unfortunately, and I'm knocking on wood, even as I say this, is that my fear is you go out and you go, okay, we're in a crisis. We need to pay some money, bring in a defensive lineman who can start, an experienced guy. We're going to go get Damon Harrison. And then, of course, the injury bug says, well, because you're reaching again, I got to bring you back down to earth. You're not doing this the organic way. 